Let's dive right into users. Users are really designed to be connected to a specific person in your organization. They can have multiple email addresses, but an easy way to think of this is that basically creating a user generates a login. This is also how users are billed or how you're gonna be billed as an admin for your G Suite. So we wanna be conservative with users and make sure that you know we're making sense and not just adding a bunch of users every time we need a new email address. So adding user is very simple. You can simply add a single user here and click through. One of the things I like to do is I like to just create a uh, password for them and send them the password. There is a quick setting where you can ask for a password change of the next sign in. So they still set up their own. With some people, it's a little bit easier to just say, hey, here's your password, go log in. Versus if you don't do that, it just emails them a link and then they have to click through and set up a few things. I've just found it easier sometimes to send people, hey, here's your login, here's your email and password, go log in. And sometimes that's just a little bit easier. So you can fill in their details here. I always ask them to add their own picture uh, and all those good things. So once you're ready with that, hit add new user, and that's pretty straight ahead. You can bulk upload users, which is pulling in a CSV file. Um, if you really need to add more than 10 people, this can be a great way to do it. Uh, typically that's something not something I deal with frequently, but it is something that you can potentially do. You can also filter. If you do have a lot of users, you can filter by name or email or role or any of these things that we'll, some of that we'll get into a bit later. And then also here under more, there are just some other custom attributes. It's not a feature that I personally use very much. So let's dig into the user record. So if you just click here on the user, it's gonna bring up a lot more options. And let me go back real quick too. When you do mouse over, it brings up a few options here for reset or rename or add to a certain group and also other things that you can do here as well. I typically work more in the record itself, so I'm gonna click here. Shows you a bit about the user as far as their usage and documents. Also any secondary information that may be if uh, there's a lost password or recovery type information. Also security. I do recommend two-step verification. I know the extra step can be frustrating for people, but we're protecting really important data here. Um, and there's also some other connected applications that we'll dig into a little bit later. As far as uh, admin roles and privileges, you can click on this um, and this is where you can change or just view um, privileges that are given. Uh, if they're separate organizational units, you can manage all of that here. Pretty in-depth settings. On this particular example, I am the super admin, so most of these things are somewhat pre-filled, for lack of a better term. Um, being the super admin is gonna have a lot of the settings all obviously available. Apps here are interesting. There's a number of uh, things you might not consider to be apps. They're just some basic Google tools that can be turned off or on, either for an individual user or for the entire domain. Sometimes these are also, there are some outside, these are third-party apps that are not Google. They're Google approved, but they're not by Google. And so when I've added these, I've turned them on for the entire domain, uh, just to keep it simple. So if I am sharing documents with somebody on our team, they'll have the access to all the same apps that I do. So I'm gonna go back to that main screen here for a minute. Um, we're not personally using the mobile device management. This can be a great thing if you are a bigger company or if you do have some turnover and you want to really be able to control the amount of information um, that they have or keep on their device. Uh, and then of course your licensing or your billing. Uh, and then there's some features here around shared drive settings. What I want to hop into here is um, specifically user information this is where you can create an alias. And an alias is another email. It can even be another domain 
that's all going to come into this same user account. So for example, uh, we've got a number here. We've got info at, this is my parent company domain. I've got uh, a bunch of these that we've set up in the past where I can have all of these email addresses, but they all come to the same inbox. So we're not creating a new user, simply creating an alias where a different email address, and these domains are all added to G Suite. We'll go through that in a little bit, but you have to have these domains added to G Suite to be able to create these. But basically, for example, you come down here, and if you go to create a new one, it's gonna ask you, you know, you can type in what you want it to be, and then it's gonna pop up all of your domains, and you can just select which domain you want uh, this alias to be under. And then again, it's just gonna come into your same regular Gmail inbox. There is a quick setting where you can also send from this address. There's additionally a setting in the actual Gmail backend where you can even set it to reply to and from the same address. So if say somebody emailed you at info at your company, you could set it to when you reply, it either comes from your primary domain or primary email address, or it can reply to them in the same email address that they sent it to. So a pretty simple setting uh, in accounts and settings in the actual Gmail platform. So we don't use any of this, but you can add more information specific to people um, or anything there. But that's the essence of the user side of things. So remember this alias piece. This is a great way to set up an info at or a contracts at or something like that. I do wanna show one more thing really quick that's gonna be relevant to that. And that is going to be if you go into apps, there is a setting called default routing and it's under Gmail. So you have to go to apps and then G Suite and then Gmail. But under default routing, this is gonna allow you to create a new email address without taking up a user. And it is gonna be on one of your domains, but you can send to multiple people. So for example, I've set up this, uh, this Meyer at realestatetalent.co. I'm just gonna click on that one to be able to see what I've already done. So I set up Meyer at a domain I've already got. You do have to type this all out. It doesn't do the drop down here. And then you're gonna wanna come down here and say deliver to recipients. So in this case, I added the recipients. Michael at Meyer gets a copy of anything sent to that email address as well as me. So you, this is great for say a team email address or if you wanna use something like contracts at or something like that where maybe people would turn in documents or send in information that needs to go to multiple people. The biggest difference about this and using an alias, there's two primary differences. One is that you can send to multiple people and the other big difference is that you can send to people outside of your domain. So if you needed to include, say, two people on the team and a virtual assistant and somebody else, maybe an attorney or somebody else who's not on your team or on your domain, you can add all those people here. I've used this with as many as 10 or 12 people. It's definitely not designed for a full company-wide, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 plus person um, segment, but it can work really great to have a new email address without taking up a user and to potentially send to multiple people on your team. One of the other things you can do under users is give additional members admin privileges. So if you click on another user who is not the super admin, you can come down to admin roles and privileges and you'll be able to assign specific roles to this user. So I had created a, a role called AS Admin. And within that role, you set up the permissions that are needed. I think in this case, it is to create new users or to be able to authorize new applications or anything like that. 
And so then you just come in here and you just turn that role on for this particular user. And this digs a bit deeper into some of the privileges here, but uh, I did not set this up here. It's a pretty simple process to just say, uh, you know, add, add access to this. And again, there's help documents connected to all these that really run through how to do this. And their support once you're a paying customer is really, really, really helpful. And uh, it'll generate a quick uh, passcode when you call in. And usually they can look into your account pretty quickly and give you some pretty great help.